Well, there's five done and 75 more to go. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Uh, last week I did a quick video on how to do dovetails by hand and I just want to show a simple way of doing it with a, with a saw and a chisel and no fuss, no jigs, just hack at it and make a dovetail. It's a, it's a simple process if you break it down into its constituents. But that can be kind of slow to do one dovetail at a time. And in all honesty, it takes me about 45 minutes to do uh, one dovetail and then to do another dovetail. Whereas if I can do a little bit of manufacturing and batch out the tails and then batch out the pin, I can speed up process a little bit. So I want to show you some of the things that I can do to make dovetails a little bit faster. Here I have uh, four of the face boards that are all ready to go. You notice that some of them have slightly different lengths. Uh, that is because they are all for different sockets in the dresser. So some of them have a slightly different size. And I actually size my panels directly to the dresser. If you want to see that video, I have that one out as well, showing how to actually piston fit drawers to a specific dresser size. Then number two, I have all of the grooves put in so I know that this is the bottom of all of the sides. And I have this story stick that I can set on here so I can make sure that all of my dovetails look fairly similar. So I can set the story stick on here and transfer, transfer those marks to the pins here. And now that I've transferred those marks, I can put my marking knife into the mark I made, slide this over against it, and then draw across. And I'm going to do the exact same thing again, and this will give me the exact same marks on every tail all the way across these four. Now another thing that some people might do is actually put masking tape all the way across this surface so that when I make these marks I'm cutting the masking tape as well so I can peel up the masking tape and it makes it very very nice to see keep and get rid of um, segments so you're not you're not trying to hunt for that little marking line you just made. Then, before I go any farther, I want to actually mark off what I want to get rid of and what I want to keep. And I am knocking out these segments in between the tails. Now, to start making the cut, I could actually put a line on here of the angle I want to cut, but I'm not going to do that. I like to just make them a little more natural. And I'll start by pinching the board so my fingers are in here, and then my thumbnail is the farthest thing sticking out. So if I pinch a little bit more, it pushes the saw that way. If I pinch a little less, the saw comes back this way. And I just want to make a nick on the far side for me. Just like that. And that nick just gives me a place so that the saw naturally rests on that point and doesn't want to slide side to side. I'll keep my fingers there and I'll slowly bring my heel down until I come all the way across that line. There. Now I have that line all the way across. It's not deep, and so I can, I can still angle the saw any way I want to go. But now that I have that marking slot, I can just put it at the angle I want to cut, and cut the angle. I'm also making sure that I'm making full cuts. I want to go all the way through from one end and all the way back to the other end. This way the saw teeth can discharge the dust that's coming out. Because this is so thick in comparison to a dovetail saw, uh, it's going to take a lot more time to cut across. But with a little bit of patience... Then I can come down to that marking gauge line and I'm ready to go. So, second first, same as the first. I'm going to cut out all of these at that angle, so I'll do all of them on this side with this angle, and then I'll rotate, and I'll do all of them on the other side and finish out these pins. So I'll come back when that's done, and I'll show you how to make the chop-out cuts a little bit faster. So now what I've done is I've actually stacked them up so that all of the faces are up. Um, I want the faces to start up so that when I cut from the other side, if I accidentally go through, I ding the inside of one and not the face of the drawer. Um, it's pretty rare once you get used to it, but uh, I like to start with the faces up just in case. And I stack them all out in a stair-step manner so that I can reach all of the dovetails. Then I'll put a single hold fast here, lock it down so it doesn't move, 
and then I'll start with a three quarter inch chisel. And just like before, I'm going to come in a little ways away from the stop mark, grab my joiner's chisel, uh, joiner's mallet, and tap, tap. And because these are all in sequence, I can now just run through them all and just make the exact same maneuver on every tail all the way down the stack, just staying away from that marking gauge line. And just like I did when I do them one at a time, I can actually continue and slowly chop through all of the waste. So I'm going to continue chopping through these and come back when I'm done. And now that I've chopped down all the way, I can actually come back through and pare out this waste and then complete the process. Chop down again, pare out, chop down, pare out. Depending upon how thick and how hard the wood is, you might have to do it uh, three, four times from each side. And then once I get down about halfway on this side, I'll flip the pieces over and repeat the process from the other side, making sure to stay away from the marking gauge line until I'm close to being done with that side. And then I'll come in and clean out right up to that marking gauge line on both sides. So a little bit uh, similar to how I did it with just one at a time, but this is just a little bit faster because you kind of get into a momentum of doing all the chopping, doing all the pairing, doing all the chopping, doing all the pairing, rather than stopping more often to change tack. Now I'll just come back in and continue on. So after then chopping out all these tails, um, I can then go on to doing the pins. Now I still have to fit the pins to the tails one at a time, so I'll lay them out and draw the lines. Um, and I did a whole video on that, so you can actually go see that rather than messing that in this video as well. So you still need to draw these out and cut them down individually one at a time. But then when it comes to actually chopping out the waste, you can do that in the exact same way you did the tails. Just stair step them all up and chop them out and away you go. It's a fairly straightforward process and a way of saving a little bit of time rather than doing them all individually. Because anytime you can do the same motion over and over again, you can save a little bit of time rather than switching back and forth between motions. Now uh, that might take a little bit of the fun out of it, but uh, you always have to look for ways to save time where you can. And you still get these great hand cut dovetails and uh, still have a lot of fun in the shop. So in this video, I didn't go into a whole lot of detail in actually setting up and doing the, the, the fitting because I covered that in another video. And if you want to find out, there's a link up here. This is just a little bit more of how to uh, save some time when you're doing dovetails because when you're doing dovetails, you're not doing just one. Even if you're just doing one drawer, you're still going to be doing two fronts and two backs, you know, four sets of tails, four sets of pins. And so there are ways to actually save some time and do it a little bit quicker. So I hope you like this. A little bit more information and uh, a lot of fun. Once you, uh, once you get into this, you'll see that they are really a lot easier than they look and uh, you can have a lot of fun with them. If you did like the video, please hit like and go ahead and smash that subscribe button. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason that this channel is still here and I get to put out content like this. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can click the link over here. Also, if you like this video, feel free to check out one of my others. You might find something you like there. And until next time, have a wonderful day.